morning learner and welcome to our today's science lesson. And as you can see on the board now, today we are building a new topic. And the new topic is food and nutrition. So just if you can remember very well in our last lesson, we looked uh, into details uh, the topic soil and we were able to look at uh, very many things about soil. We looked at three types of soils, of which we checked, we looked at it, and we mentioned about something about clay, loam, and uh, so finally we mentioned something about sandy, sandy soil. And we mentioned that, uh, uh, that uh, sandy soil has uh, a rough texture, meaning it has larger spaces. Then clay soil is fine in terms of filling, meaning it has very fine particles. And we mentioned something about loam soil that has medium or moderate uh, uh, particles. Hence, if you feel it, it is not very rough or not very smooth. It is medium. So we mentioned something about the soils. Like clay soil is best in drain is the is the, is the poor in drainage sandy soil is best in drainage and then we mentioned about loam soil is moderate in drainage that is why loam soil is the best for farming because it has moderate uh, uh, drainage we also mentioned something about water retention and we said that the soil that has the best that retains water for a long time is clay soil followed by by loam and then uh, Sandy soil cannot retain soil of water for a long time. Hence, you say that the soil that, uh, that is waterlogged for a long time, that remains waterlogged, is clay soil because it can retain water for a long time. Then we mentioned lastly about capillarity. That is the upward movement of water for, in the soil. And we say that the soil that is best in capillarity, the best soil for, uh, in capillarity is uh, clay soil still because of its fine particles followed by loam and then sandy soil is the poorest as far as capillarity is concerned. So today, just before we go to a new topic, I'd like to, to provide some few questions here. Like here, we have the first question. Soil texture depends on dash. Soil texture depends on the amount of air in the soil, organic matter in the soil, size of soil particles, or amount of water in the soil. And our answer is C, the size, the size of particles, the soil. Talk of soil texture, we may talk of the soil, the particles in the soil. Then, which of the following properties of soil does not depend on the size of its particles? Which one does not depend on the size of its particles? Which of the following properties of soil does not depend on the size of its particles? So we have water retention, drainage, texture, and color. But the answer is color. Color does not depend completely on the, on the texture of the, of the size of particles. Then uh, number three, which of the following soil can be used to make the shortest ribbon? Shortest ribbon learner is simply the soil with the largest particles, and that is sandy soil. Long soil will make medium particle, or medium ribbon. Then the longest ribbon will belong to the what? The clay soil. We say that. That's why it's used for modeling, making bricks, and etc. So now let, next is in which one of the following soil? Does water drains faster? Water drains faster in sandy soil because it has large particles. Then how can the water retention ability of sandy soil be improved? We want sandy soil to improve, to be improved, what do we do? Uh, we apply organic manure. When we apply organic manure into sandy soil, we improve its water retention capability, hence it can now retain water for a long time. Then, uh, so learn mark that we add organic manure. And organic manure are the ones being bought. The ones that are being bought in the, in the farms. Then we have... Uh, then one the, the main reason why sandy soil is mixed with cement in building is because it... Because it has large air spaces. That is the only reason. We add ma we will, if you try to add cement to clay soil, it won't mix. Why? Because of the fine, the fine particles. Because of the fine particles, it can't mix. So now let us now move very quickly to our today's lesson. As we have said that it is on food and nutrition. So just from the word food and nutrition, well, let us define those terms first. 
before we get to continue with our lesson. So as you can see on the board, we have the word food that I've just described there. Food is any substance taken into the body by drinking or eating. By drinking or eating. A number of times we do this practically at home. We do eat every now and again. And we do uh, drink water or even ju 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 juice uh, or even uh, a soda. For instance, tea. We also take tea by drinking. But food is taken by eating. Eating meaning you have to chew then swallow. So any, anything taken in as far as eating and drinking is concerned, like, that is food. And then what is nutrition? Nutrients, for example. Nutrients are just health, healthy substances found in the food. So when you take, for example, meat, what, is, what, what makes you take meat plus kumawiki plus ugali? There are nutrients found in those different foods. That is why we eat them. And you realize that when you eat an, a, a, a certain type of food for a long time without eating the rest, you may lack some nutrients in the body. So those nutrients are the healthy substances that are now found inside the foods that will make you healthy. So we have different nutrients that we are going to learn in this particular lesson. Then we have nutrition. And as you can see, nutrition is the process of uh, providing the body with the right food for the good health. The process of now giving the body that thing. The process of giving your body proteins, for example. The process of giving your body vitamins, for example. The process of giving your body uh, uh, energy-giving food, that is... Uh, yeah, I, uh, energy giving food. That process is what we know as uh, is known as nutrition. So we'll say that this person is suffering from malnutrition. So mal meaning you are not giving your body the right nutrients that can make it healthy and strong. So let's go continue ahead. We have look at the functions of food. What are the fun key functions of food in the body? What are the functions of food? Because you, you may be eating food and you don't know what food does in your body. So number one, these are things we did in class four, is just cheap, uh, is to bathe the body. And that's what's going to give us the first nutrient, that is protein. So proteins, their major work is to build our body, their body building food. So they build the body, and then we have number two, to protect the body against diseases. For example, which diseases, which uh, food now protects us against diseases? And here comes, we mention something about uh, now that protects the body. This one that protects the body. That provides the body, what are the lines here? To protect the body. The one that protects the body, Lana, are vitamins. They protect our body, they protect us from diseases and the rest. Then we have the one that uh, repair broken parts. So they repair the worn out tissues. You normally talk of bodybuilding and repair food. So these are still proteins. They repair the worn out tissues in our body. And again, uh, they repair the worn out or broken tissues in our body. Then the one that provides the body with energy, with enough energy to work. The one that provides the energy, energy learner, those are energy giving food. We also call them, we call them uh, uh, carbohydrates. They give us energy. A good example is ugali that you normally like at home and rice. Those ones are very good examples of carbohydrates. And then lastly, Lana, we talk of the one that helps us to remain alive, active. Food generally helps us remain alive, active and strong. Without food, Lana means to eat within for a week or even two weeks. You'll find yourself uh, six feet uh, down, meaning uh, your body needs food to remain alive, to remain healthy, and to remain strong. Without food, you'll be dead. So, after looking at that, Lana, we now want to go directly to nutrition, nutrients found in food. We now go to nutrients that are found. Which nutrients are these that are found in food that are very, very, very important? So, I just may mention, now go to nutrients. Nutrients found in food. The nutrients found in food. So by this, we'll mention the main types of nutrients found in food are proteins, number one. 
we have proteins. Then number two, we have carbohydrates. And uh, just to mention, proteins are also known as proteins. These are body, body building. Just to expand on it, body building and repair food. Food. Then of them we have carbohydrates. And we these ones are energy giving. Energy giving. After that, after energy giving food. We also have uh, the vitamins. Oh, these are also called the protective. They protect us from getting diseases and etc. And then we have fats and oils. Fats and oils, very important. And then lastly, we have the mineral salts. The mineral. So we are not salt that we normally eat when we are uh, eating our food. The mineral salts are just uh, these are just we learn about more about it. The mineral salts. So we are going to begin with our, the first one that is proteins. So number one, we have the proteins, for which we now learn to know what are proteins. So proteins, as we, have, we mentioned in class four, they are called they are called bodybuilding foods or body repair food so body building and repair foods as we mentioned and then they are used in our body to build new body cells for proper growth they build this one's build new body body cells they build new body cells and then they are also they also repair broken and worn out tissues as we mentioned they repair repair broken or worn out tissues they repair broken or worn out tissues and again they are necessary for the growth of flesh and development of new of muscles uh, yeah they are necessary for the growth of flesh they ensure we are used because they easier term they ensure growth growth of uh, muscles muscles and and uh, muscles and flesh and flesh so much for that then they also act as bodybuilding blocks they also act as uh, bodybuilding blocks they build the body so let's look at the sources what are the sources Sources of proteins. The main source of proteins, so we normally have we have animals, animal proteins, and then we also have plants, plant proteins. We mentioned that some things about this in class four. So we categorize them as far as that. So source of animal proteins, that is what no we want to do, but what are the main source of animal proteins? Talk of animal, because these ones are now, now come and allowed in examination. We need to know which ones are animal proteins and which ones are plant proteins. So we talk of sources now. Sources of animal, animal proteins. And other things, I'll just mention them very fast. We have beef as our first example. Beef is the main source of animal protein that people like. Then we also have uh, so beef, just the meat from a cow, you know that from a cow. We also have uh, we have eggs, very important. Eggs, we have milk. Another one we have chicken. We have fish, all types of fish come under that place. We also have pork. And pork, you know, is the meat from a what? A pig. 
we have pork, and then we have mutton. A mutton is found on goats and sheep. So this is meat found uh, in those two animals. Then we have locusts, and then we have termites. When we talk of termites, I don't mean the termites that normally destroy our crops and uh, our timber. These are termites normally found most of them during rainy seasons, back in the home at home, back uh, in the countryside. We normally see termites being eaten by people. Yeah, they get out of the soil during rainy season and we eat them. These locusts are not the locusts you may know, but these ones are specific locusts that are meant for food that people normally get uh, back at home. So we have sources of plant proteins. Comes to plant protein, what are, what are the main sources of this? Sources of plant proteins. Plant proteins. So these ones, in most cases, we talk of uh, legumes. So legumes is the main one here. We have legumes as the main source of plant proteins, and this include beans. One, we have beans. Any type of beans comes there. Then we have soya. We normally call it soya beans. Then number three. We have uh, groundnuts. Groundnuts. Four, we have cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. And then we also have bean grams, peas. Green grams. Six, we have peas. And then lastly, we have the cow peas. All these are written here, but these ones are, are legumes, they are under legumes. And all legumes, so if you just take it like this, all legumes are examples of what? Are examples of, uh, of plant proteins. And all types of meat, those you mentioned here, are examples of animal proteins. So don't miss them. After that, Lana, we'll go to, so we talk about proteins, so we go to number two. And our number two is going to be carbohydrates. And we also see what you can learn under carbohydrates and the sources. So carbohydrates, Lana, as we know, I just saying that these are energy-giving food. These are energy-giving food. These are energy-giving foods. And again, we need to know that they provide the body with energy. We talk about energy from energy. Eh? So what they do is that they provide. They provide the body with energy. Yeah. Take a lot of uh, a lot of vitamins and proteins, neglecting uh, carbohydrates, and you see yourself falling down all the time because of lack of enough energy from protein, from uh, carbohydrates. So they provide energy, they provide the body with energy to do work and remain strong. They also keep our bodies warm, very important. They keep the body warm. In areas where we have coal, in, in cold areas, just be specific. You normally see people eating, uh, taking coffee a number of times. Yeah, some people are taking our uh, uh, roasted uh, roasted maize, for example. Why do they do that? To keep warm. The uh, uh, maize, roasted maize, is a very good example of what? A very good example of uh, of protein, of carbohydrates. And then the so-called coffee, coffee being taken hot, hot beverage, coffee. Or tea, for example. That is a very good example of proteins. So we can see the way they, are, they, are, they apply there. And then another one, another one is that uh, we need energy to play, run, breathe, and even think. Without that, you can't think. So 
Mark that energy war, energy is needed in the body to play, to run, need energy, to breathe, need energy, and again to think. We can't think in class. Take a, think of a learner, you when you're in class here, or even now where I will uh, sit down there listening to my lesson. In case, or in any case, you are very hungry. Can you learn? The answer is no, automatically. So we need to eat first before learning because we can't think when we are when we are hungry. And automatically when we are hungry we become angry at the same time. So we will look at these examples now, sources of energy or sources of energy giving food. So the sources. Another source is here, Anna. These are things are simple. We have maize as the main example. We also have rice. Another example, we have wheat, anything made of wheat flour, like bread and etc. Then we have sorghum. Sorghum. And then we have millet. Millet. And then we have oats. So this oats normally come in examination. Don't let have a problem using oats is a good example of carbohydrates. Oats is a very good example of carbohydrates. And then we have uh, Tillings under, under that, we have a cereal, so we, we have mentioned that the cereals here. The first example, the first source is cereals. And we have mentioned cereals here. Then number two, number two, we have the tubers. As I mentioned in the cereals, we now have the, the tubers. So this was one. Then number two, we have the tubers, and the tubers are many, these are the key ones again. Where are the tubers? We have cassava. We also have aloes. After aloes, we also have the sweet potatoes. And we also have the Irish potato. And then last Rana, we have the yams. These ones are key examples, very good examples of, of this. Uh, the something we have not mentioned. So we can put it under other examples, because we also have other examples of such. We have boiled. This one is now not under tubers, but this we have NP. We have boiled. Boiled bananas, bananas, also fall under, under carbohydrates. I can't talk of banana. Banana is a fruit we know, but when we boil that banana, boiled banana, taken the way it is, is now down come under carbohydrates. Let's not mention it under fruits again. Fruit is the ripe one, that is sweet when eaten. So after that, Lana, we go directly, you know, we have other examples. Yeah, green banana. So we can talk of green banana. Sugar cane. Also come there. We also have honey. Honey. So green banana or boiled banana. Green banana or boiled banana. Honey and sugar cane also for them. Then we go to our number three. That is vitamins. Vitamins going to be our number three. We have looked at proteins and carbohydrates. Now we go direct to vitamins and we see we can crown our lesson there. Number three, we know a lot of vitamins. And I'm going to say very well, we have mentioned that these are protective food. These ones are protective. Foods. They protect us against diseases and illnesses. So uh, we have they include vitamin A. They provide they protect the body against diseases, cause organisms. So these are examples. 
we have vitamin A, A, B, C, D, E, and K. So these are the items. We have vitamin A now, vitamin B, C, D, E, and then K. You can ask yourself, why are we omitting letters? But you have A, B, C, D, E, where is L, and etc. No. Some say we have vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and K only. We don't ask the rest. So the main source of uh, vitamins are fruits and vegetables. We mentioned that. The main source, the main source of these vitamins, of these the vitamins are fruits and veggies or vegetables. And as we have a saying, an English saying or an English adding that goes, one apple a day adds a day. <laughs> Some people say like that. So eat an apple today, meaning you add another day. Eat another one tomorrow, you add another day in your life. I say like that. Why? Because apple has most of these vitamins. And it will protect you from getting illnesses anyhow. You know, people die because of illnesses. So when you eat an apple today, meaning you have added a number of vitamins in the body that will protect you against these dangerous diseases like coronavirus. And you remember what the minister said, the minister of health said the other day. He said, he mentioned something about nutrition. And he said that you need to eat a lot of balanced diet at home and take vitamins to prevent us from mild corona. So mild meaning the so-called asymptomatic. You get corona today and you can't show any sign of it. So when you eat a lot of uh, vitamins, you tend to make it dark and hence we shall control it. So we are going to go to these vitamins. The sources are, uh, and uses are summarized in a table that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a short table here. And the table says that we have vitamins. Here we have vitamins. And the range A, B, C, D, E, and K affirmation. And then in our next, we have the sources. What are the sources of this? Of this? And then lastly, we have the uses. So then from here we are going to see whatever we are trying to mention here. So we have the vitamins and then here we have the source. And then lastly, we have the uses. So the main source of vitamin A are carrots, milk, eggs. So here, vitamin A, we have carrots, milk, we also have eggs. Lana, we also have fish and green vegetables. We have fish and then we have green vegetables. All come there. And then there are their main uses for proper eyesight. Proper eyesight. In short, what makes our eyes see well? Look at our old grandmothers and old grandfathers at home. What beds, what things can we give them to make their eyes to see well? We need to give them a lot of vitamin A. So vitamin A is meant for proper eyesight. And again, we need to see the whatever we should give them a lot, not of carrots. Any meal we cook for our old grandmothers who have bad eyesight should be carrots. The food should contain carrots. They should eat a lot of meal. We should give them eggs a number of times. We should give them fish, green, green vegetables. Any meal you give them should not lack a veggies. And then we have uh, vitamin B, and vitamin B here, vitamin B here, we need to talk about uh, vegetables, so we talk of green leafy, 
vegetables in Cambia under vitamin B. We also have grains such as uh, the grains that you mentioned, the cereals. The cereals are all based in vitamin B. And then uh, for mouth, for smooth skin, proper digestion and working of the brain. So for proper working of brain, that is number one. We also have for proper digestion, digestion, and lastly, uh, we have for smooth skin. So we can get asked this in the exam, that which vitamin do we need for smooth skin? So to make our skin look, uh, look smooth and, uh, and, and appealing to the eye, smooth and lovely, we need, we need a lot of vitamin B. For smooth skin, you can see here, for proper digestion of food in our body, and then for proper working of the brain, we need vitamin B. And what are the sources? We have talked of green vegetables, and we have talked of cereals. Cereals and green vegetables are good sources of vitamin B. Vitamin C, that is going to be our third last. We have fresh fruits. The main source are fresh fruits. Then we have uh, vegetables such as oranges, mangoes, and pow pow. Fruits and vegetables. So, under this, specifically, they have mentioned about oranges, mangoes, and pow pow. Oranges, pow pow, and they have also mentioned about mangoes. So what do they do? They prevent scurvy, prevent scurvy, and scurvy is simply bleeding gums, and for strong gums, they prevent scurvy, and we have said scurvy, what scurvy is? Scurvy is simply bleeding gums. We mentioned bleeding gums in class 4, and then we also mentioned about for strong gums, for strong gums. Guns. So for some guns, Lana, we are in need of that. For foreign guns, we need, we need that. And then, we also continue with the vitamin D. Under vitamin D, Lana, so still in vitamin C, there's something I have not mentioned for strong gum and then for quick healing of wounds. For quick healing, healing of wounds, we also need vitamin C. Then for vitamin D, Lana, we have sunlight, the sources of vitamin D, vitamin D we have sunlight. Normally, see, young children are being taken to, to bask in the sun in the morning to get vitamin D. So, vitamin D, sunlight is the first source, and then we have egg and milk. Egg, and then we have milk. A young child is giving a lot of milk and eggs, the egg, the yolk of the egg, to, to maintain. So, all that uh, uh, it works together with the calcium and phosphorus to make strong bones and steel. So, it's for strong. Strong bones and teeth. So for our little bones to remain strong, we really need vitamin D. And then for vitamin E, we have these as are all grains. All, all grains are sources of vitamin E. And what do they do? They are for a, for a healthy and productive system, for a healthy reproductive system. For a healthy healthy, reproductive you know that all animals reproduce so for that reproductive system of yours to remain healthy you need to hear a lot of grains maintain them and then lastly is vitamin K and this may also simply green vegetables and eggs green vegetables 
and eggs. So in terms of this green vegetables banner, cabbages is out of that place because cabbages are not green. And then eggs, they are, they are for clotting of blood. Their main use is for clotting. You may ask me, but what is the meaning of, of clotting of blood? The main use of vitamin K, Lana, is for cl blood clotting. When somebody cuts you with a little bit, for example, you realize that blood will start oozing from your body. Is it not true? Yes, it is. So when blood oozes from your body, you realize that uh, your mom or dad or your caretaker takes long to make that blood stop. Finally, when the blood stops, we say that blood has clotted. So that thing that makes your body to stop, uh, your, your, your blood to stop oozing, we call it clotting. When the blood has clotted, meaning it can no come out of the body. So blood clot clotting is engineered uh, by this. When the K ensures that when you have an injury, your blood will come out rapidly, very, very quickly. So those who are healthy, those who eat a lot of vitamin K, vegetables and eggs, when blood starts coming out of the body, blood stops passing. But when someone doesn't take vitamin K, blood will, not, will take a long time to clot in your body. So then I want to stop them and leave fats. I want to leave fats and minerals for our next lesson. Fats and minerals for our next lesson. So until next time, I want to wish you well, have a lovely day, and may God bless you all as we uh, purpose to meet next time. Bye.